that bed begins in darkness, it is often a time of hoping and waiting for some sort of magic, a little bit of thought to happen. The great light is some really dark places. The, let these words speak to you now in this poem by Anne Williams entitled In the Darkness. The whole world waits in December darkness for a glimpse of the light of God, even those who start off humbug and chase away the terrors. Have been, have been seen looking toward the skies. The one who declared he never would forgive has forgiven. And those who have left home have returned. And even wars are halted briefly, as the whole world looks starward in the December darkness. We appear from our windows, watching for an angel with rainbow wings, to announce the hope of the world. Lighting a candle in the darkness helps us find our way. In darkness, we lose direction. We cannot see where we've been or where we are going. A single candle flickering brightly helps, helps us find our way again. Today, we light the first advent candle and begin helping show us the way in the darkness. Let us pray. Holy One, in these Advent days of darkness and waiting, we often feel as though your face is hidden from our sight. We know you are there in the shadows. Help us to trust and walk by faith rather than by sight as we seek the face of God before us. Amen. Please join me in the reading of the scripture, John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. May God add his understanding to this scripture. I'd like to invite the children forward at this time. Blink an 
the lights for them? Huh? Good. That would make them feel better. Anything else? What else can we do if somebody is sad? Like if somebody is... Give them a big hug. Give them a big hug. Miss Ilda loves hugs. She knows that, what, that answer really good. What else can we do? Can you help mom and dad make some cookies? Yeah. Yeah? And then do what with them? Eat them? <laughs> huh? Would that help somebody else not be sad? No? What should you do with them? Give them to the person who's sad. Those are some ways that you can help people. You can smile at them. Something as simple as a smile can make a person feel not sad anymore. Or a little bit happier anyway. So you can bring light to people who are in the darkness, who feel like they're in the darkness, without turning on a light switch. Your smile, or your hug, or your cookies can bring light into somebody's life. And do you know what else? who else can bring light into all of our lives all the time, every day? Dog. Yes! Good! Good! <laughs> Short answer! Good job, yes! God and Jesus can bring light into our lives all the time when we're feeling sad or if we're just in the dark, kind of. Or if you're in the dark, literally, and you're scared, Jesus can make you feel better. God can make you feel better, huh? Okay, are we ready? Let's pray. Ready? Dear God, Dear God thank you for being the light. Thank you for being the light. In our darkness, in our darkness, help us to remember, help us to remember, to be the light to others, to be the light to others, by helping them, by helping them. Amen. Amen. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. with me, please. 
And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Well, this verse varies just a little bit uh, in different translations. You know there's many, many, many translations of the Bible. And in your bulletin is also a paper that tells what different translations of the Bible, how they word it. There, there, there's one word, you know, the comprehend that we have in ours. is the word that is most often changed in the other translations, but they all mean the same thing. I encourage you to take this list and to read over them. And as we do with our confirmation students, we encourage them to read different versions and to pick the one that speaks most to them. Which one do they understand the most or means the most to them in their life? And that's the one that they should read. There's not a right one or a wrong one. You're invited to do the same thing. The one that's printed in your bulletin today that we just read is from the New King James translation. But no matter what words are chosen, the meaning is still the same. Yes, we all have times of darkness. And with all darkness, we wouldn't really appreciate the light. How many of you know of a time when the power has gone out? And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how many times I flipped the light switch on. Or how I need light to do this or to do that. Light is something that we don't really appreciate until it's not there. Light and darkness together create shadows, right? And the definition online for a shadow is a dark place where light from a light source is blocked by an opaque object. It occupies all of the three-dimensional volume behind an object with light in front of it. A little bit deep there, but... Shadow is the darkness caused by light, not the absence of light. And still, darkness did not comprehend the light. <coughs> Jesus is our light and our hope that brings us out of any shadowy or dark situations in our lives. We just have to look beyond that blind spot <coughs> and detect the light of Christ even though we might feel like our life is a shadow. Last year, I was introduced to this wonderful book by Jan L. Richardson called Night Visions. And much of the material that I'm going to be using and we're going to be exploring through this season of Advent was inspired by this book. Richardson describes Advent saying, the season of Advent means there is something on the horizon, the lights of which we have never seen before. It's not possible to keep it from coming, because it will. That's just how Advent works. What is possible is not to see it, to miss it, to turn just as it brushes past you, and you begin to grasp what it was missed. So during this Advent season, stay, sit, linger, tarry, ponder, wait, behold, wonder. There will be enough time for running, for rushing, for worrying, and for pushing. For now, stay. And wait. Something is on the horizon. So what is it that's on your horizon that Richardson speaks of? It's clear that not everyone is looking forward to this upcoming season of Christmas. There are those who have lost loved ones, those who are ill, some who are lonely, with no family nearby, and others who suffer from depression and other mental illnesses. This Advent season, our focus is here in this worship 
will intentionally acknowledge those who are in the shadows or in the darkness of this season as well as the light. There are things in each and every one of our lives that bring us into the darkness from time to time. And we will weekly be invited to leave those things one at a time here at the altar. One thing I want to make very clear is that darkness does not have negative connotations as we as Christians often refer to it. It is, is it not in the darkness, in our darkest days, that the most magical God moments occur? This past year, those who participated in the Rocky Mountain Conference annual celebration online were blessed to hear from author Valerie Kaur, who posed this really thoughtful question. What if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb. So I ask you now, what if we thought of the darkness in our life as something new, waiting to be born, rather than something <coughs> that we've lost or that has caused us sadness? This year, I invite you to think of darkness more as a longing for those things needed in our lives, like healing or peace. In the darkness of the womb, the future is waiting to be born. Each Advent season begins with our Advent candles unlit, and one by one, we bring light as part of our preparation for the celebration of the birth of the Holy One. The Advent season is a time when we're invited to sink deeply into ourselves and to reorient ourselves to the world and to God. I close now again using words from Jan Richardson's book, Night Visions. She shared a poem that's called The New Bowl, and it will present a challenge for us today and in every week as we move through the Advent season. The new bowl. I hold the bowl that I bought today. Midnight blue on the outside, white on the inside. It's a good weight. It fits into the palm of my two hands. Its size will accommodate food enough to sustain me through the evening through sleep and through dreams. Washing it by hand late that night, I remembered a shred from a D. Patrick Miller poem. There is no dying of the light, just the washing of the bowl and overturning it for the night. I rinse the new bowl, turn it over in the drainer, and sink into the night. In the turning of the bowl is the turning of the world, and in every moment somewhere, the day is turning to darkness. Bless those who welcome it, who love it. Bless those who fear it and bid it quickly pass. And those who touch with delight in the night, bless. And those who cry out as the shadows give way to terror, bless too. Make us bold in the darkness to protect each other's slumber. And make us courageous in the night to guard each other's dreams. What is in your darkness, your shadows? What is it that's keeping you from fully preparing for the birth of the Christ child? that light that shines through the darkness. I invite you now to imagine that you are placing those things that cause you dark, shadowy moments, those dark, shadowy events or thoughts or fears or sorrows into this blue bowl where we will leave them here 
inviting the Holy Spirit to shine light through those dark moments. Come, let us begin this Advent journey towards the birth of the light, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 